Hey guys and welcome, welcome back to my channel. So today we are discussing makeup dupes and whether or not they're good or bad. Maybe a little bit of both for the beauty community. So if you guys want to hear more about them, just let's go. Now, what is a makeup dupe for those who may not know? A makeup dupe is a product brought to the market by one brand that either resembles or is supposed to work the same as another product already brought to the market by a different brand that usually costs less money. I'm saying usually for a reason. And you guys know in these type of videos, I bring you the perspective of both consumers and the brands. And as consumers, for the most part, we usually like makeup dupes why one because they're affordable again for the most part they're usually affordable um now think about it we, we we're out here and we see these products that are popular everyone's talking about it they're supposed to be the the next best thing since sliced bread and then it costs like $30. Like think about the Laura Mercier powder that we were talking about the other day that now retails for like $39 almost $40 for a setting powder a lot of people don't have it like that where they can be dropping forty dollars on a um on a setting powder or think of the the beauty blender they don't have twenty dollars to be dropping on a sponge so when they see you know elf which is usually known as an affordable brand coming out with their own version of a beauty blender sponge or i believe um maybelline fit me is supposed to be a dupe for the laura mercier powder that I think is like seven, eight dollars compared to forty. You're going to like that because now you now you have the coins to spend on a product that is supposed to give you the same outcome as another product that you might not be able to afford. You can still have that type of experience that other people are having, but that's more budget friendly for you, right? So we like it because it's affordable. Another reason we like it, another reason why you know I stress that dupes are usually more affordable, but that's not always the case. Another reason we like dupes is because maybe a brand duping another brand's product now gives you a chance to use a type of product that you wanted to try but you didn't want to support that brand okay i've gotten comments like that before like um this brand is $30 and that brand is $25. So how is that a dupe? It's a dupe because the two products work the same but they're not the same product. So now if you don't like Kat Von D Beauty but NYX comes out with their own eyeliner that's supposed to be a dupe for Kat, oh wait, no, NYX, NYX is gonna be affordable. If you don't like Kat Von D, but you like Too Faced, those are two brands that are around the same price range. Yes, they're around the same price range, or you might not like either brand. You guys know what I'm saying here. Um, now you have the option of trying the same type of product that might give you the same outcome um but you don't have to give your money to a brand that you don't want to support you see what i'm saying here so that's another reason why people uh like dupes because they, they they help you have options when you're shopping right another reason people like dupes is because sometimes dupes allow you access to to things that aren't available to you because of location um makeup revolution is a brand that is very known known for doing dupes and it's it's good for the people who are you know in the UK where makeup revolution is based UK based right it's good for those people over there because if makeup revolution is duping you know brands that are only shipping to the US or you know their shipping to the UK is going to make a $20 product now $70 um that's good for them because now again they can have access to the same type of things but for for less money um not even just because it's a brand that costs less but less because of shipping and stuff like that so dupes allow a lot of access and it it allows an experience that yeah it might not be the same exact thing but a lot of the times especially for a lot of dupes um they give you the same outcome so it's like you're not really missing out because you can't exactly have that 40 dollar powder compared to the seven dollar powder you know however there is a problematic side to the idea of makeup dupes and the biggest issue is usually you know it's, it's low-key like stealing um that's the, that's the main thing that people talk about when they say why makeup dupes are bad for the community especially especially in the beauty community when you can be accused of stealing you know someone's smoky eye someone's eyeliner look when when people and creators are so protective of the idea of creativity it makes sense why that's a valid argument that you know it it is stealing from someone else you don't even have to be in the industry you can just think about it like yourself 
let's say you you're a painter and you commission a type of painting look and then someone else comes out and you know maybe they throw an extra couple of dots in there but it's very obvious that they are now selling their own type of painting that is based off of yours you're gonna feel some type of way that's a very valid natural feeling for people to have so i get that my thing with that is a lot of the times especially in the beauty community um that only becomes an issue when it's a, a person or a brand that you you stand you're a fan of um that's being duped you know um, I don't know if you guys remembered a couple months ago, was it this year? Maybe end of last year, um, Manny MUA has his Lunar Beauty Cosmetics and there was a whole big thing because um, Makeup Revolution had come out with a dupe type of product for a product that he had already come out with and it was a big thing. And people were saying, you know, it's stealing, it's this, come up with your own ideas. Again, valid arguments. However, again, a lot of the people that I saw saying those things have no problem using any of the other things that make up Revolution dupes from other brands. And I'm, pre I'm pretty sure Manny himself has done, you know, duping type of video. So then you get that argument of, okay, well, why is it a problem now? Because it's either a person or a brand that you admire, but you'll use their dupes of other things you know if it's a problem for one it should be a problem for everyone right and later on in the video i'll get into you know where i think duping becomes a problem just not just in this but just in general when it comes to duping where i think it becomes a problem another valid concern when it comes to makeup duping is that it's kind of like taking the easy way out you know it lacks creativity and it is a lazy way of you know um, keeping the idea of the products that you're putting out going by just taking everyone else's products, especially for the brands where that's all that they're known for. You know, they don't put out their own collections, their own ideas, anything like that. They're literally just a brand that is known for duping other brand stuff. Like two years ago, there was a website called Hush hush.com um, and that was all that it was known for. It had a whole bunch of brands on there that duped every other brand. Huda, Benefit, Tarte, Too Faced, you name the brand, I'm sure there was something on that website that was duping whatever brand you were looking for. For a good minute, it worked for them. That's all you saw all over the place. There were there were sponsored videos all over the place. There were sponsored ads when you scroll on Instagram. There were videos, um, haul videos about shopping on that website. There were videos comparing the original to the dupe product. It was literally all over the place and it it makes sense when you listen to that argument of how is that fair that especially this being a billion dollar industry how is that fair that someone can just come in and take the ideas of someone else sprinkle a little bit of their own in there maybe um and now they get to just take off off of someone else's idea so you don't need any of your own type of creativity to make it you can just take someone else's idea switch it up maybe a little bit and you should be allowed to just you know roam freely in in the fruits of someone else's labors and so it, again that is another valid criticism and the last criticism that kind of ties into the fact that it's stealing and it's lacking your own creativity while taking someone else's is that a lot of the times it's being done to the smaller guy in the situation who can't do anything about it and i feel like a lot of people don't see it that way because they're looking at it so linear in a way that okay well why am i supposed to care that you know millionaire one is being ripped off by millionaire two when at the end of the day they're both making money but i was able to save myself some money by shopping with millionaire too who sells their stuff for less money and again okay i could see i could see why that's someone's argument especially in, in the capitalist world that we live in why consumers feel like i don't really need to care about you know what's going on in the business world like at the end of the day it's about my pockets but you know to take the conversation out of the beauty world for a minute and let's let's step into the fashion world where you know maybe this example might help people see this argument this criticism a little bit better there's a brand on Twitter called Bedazzled, Bedazzled, I believe it's called. And yeah, she she sells her stuff for a lot more money than, you know, the average things you see on the boutiques and, you know, scrolling on Instagram and stuff like that. Like, yeah, you, you gonna you shell out some dollars for her stuff. And I see her stuff constantly being ripped off by, you know, either uh, bigger designers or like fast fashion brands like Fashion Nova. And okay, so again, looking at it, Yes, here is Bedazzled and they, they can sell you something for $300 and then here's Fashion Nova who can sell it to you for $30 
And it, if you say to yourself, well, why am I supposed to care? Because at the end of the day, Bedazzled has people buying her stuff and she's going to be selling, you know, 15, $300 jackets and Fashion Nova is going to be selling 300 $30 shirts, they're both walking home with money at the end of the day, so why am I supposed to care? Okay, well, you ever stop and think like, maybe Fashion Nova can sell it for that much because they have more funds because of the way that their stuff is made, ethically or lacking that of. You know, maybe uh, Bedazzled is what it costs. Well, first of all, you know, when you start your own business, you can, you can choose whatever market you're trying to hit whenever you start your business to begin with. But maybe it's because like she actually makes her stuff. You know, if, if we had to pay what things cost to, to be made like ethically, you know, without the use of the labor that some of these brands are using, we would have to spend a lot more money than we do on a lot of the things that we buy. So, so at the end of the day, is that fair that, you know, here's a woman, she comes up with her own ideas, she makes her own stuff. And because this brand can afford to produce the same things for a less amount of money, um, they, they're able to make like five times the amount of money that she makes off of her own designs. You know, does, does that help balance the idea out, you know, bringing it back to the makeup world? Yes. Tatcha is a brand that can sell their stuff for $52, but maybe their stuff is $52 of, you know, better ingredients, better stuff that's being put on your face. Even if it's not to say, okay, well, they're still making their money, but a brand like NYX who could dupe their stuff and, you know, sell it for $10 okay, well, oh, they're both making their money. Okay, but, but NYX has more more resources than Tatcha has. It's Isn't it owned by L'Oreal? Is NYX owned, I think, yeah, NYX is owned by L'Oreal. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah, they're able to give that to you because they have more resources, because they have more of this, because they have more of that. So is that really fair? Because at the end of the day that, yeah, they're both walking away with money that one can do that to the other one. Um, especially, especially since, if this is sold for $10 and this is sold for 52, don't you think that $10 is taking a good amount of money away from the one that's being sold for 52? You know, going back to Bedazzled, who do you think people are going to buy it from? Do you think they're gonna go spend the $30 for tights from Fashion Nova or the 300 from Bedazzled? So yeah, she's walking away with money at the end of the day, but it's less money for her own ideas from brand who, who's not as ethical as she is. So I've given you both sides, why it's good, why it's bad, here's mine. My problem with duping comes when it's not a dupe and it's a straight up imitation of whatever is being copied. Like nothing has been done to change the packaging. You know, they, they borderline use the same names um like the how it's how it's advertised like nothing has been changed like that it's straight up like looks like you know you just took your brand name and put it on someone else's product that's when it becomes a problem to me um as a consumer like with the whole makeup revolution and lunar beauty like makeup revolution you would you, you do doing too much on that one um i get that they want it to look like the product that they're duping and i'll tell you later on why um they want you to know that it's a dupe of whatever that was doing too much on that dupe um like the, i was looking around to see if i have any dupes to show but you guys know i've decluttered a lot of my makeup um my makeup collection so here I am, but here is this Makeup Revolution um, Pore Perfecting Primer, and let's just pretend that this is the the circle version of the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer. Makeup Revolution came out with this product, and it was supposed to be a dupe of this Tatcha product, the circle one, right? So although I had a problem with the Makeup Revolution dupe of the Lunar Beauty one, like this type of dupe here where it's like we're just giving you a product that's similar to a more expensive one um that i have less of a problem with you know because if you've seen the circle one of tatcha you know it looks like this it looks like this type of packaging it's purple yeah they're the same shape but that's pretty much the the you know same thing between the two because mind you that conversation's been out there that well didn't tatcha dupe it from tarte and then elf and then Makeup Revolution had shaded e.l.f. And that's also why it's so hard to be so picky when it comes to dupes, because it's kind of like, 
at some point like isn't everyone kind of taking a little bit of everyone else you know like there was there was one person who was the first to come out with a square shaped palette there was one person that was the first to come out with a circle shaped palette you know there was some person that was the first to put their product in this type of component so it's like it gets very blurred between the lines of you know um what's duping what's taking someone else's idea what's okay to take what's not okay to take and keep in mind a lot of the times dupes are not so i can tell that you're duping sometimes it's literally just this product ended up you know performing the same way that another product has worked like i said earlier with you know the maybelline fit me powder and the laura mercier powder those two powders look nothing alike one is a circle the other one is a square um they don't have the same shade line range throughout the powders however you know like one person tested it out uh, or or one person tested one product and it reminded them that oh this kind of works how this product works so dupes are not always so you know they look exactly the same sometimes they're just products that end up working the same way that others do so that's why you know it's like i can't be so like yes or no on dupes but i know i can be like no on the dupes that are just like straight up just repackaged as the, as a different brand. Now from the brand perspective, it's a financial thing because for consumers, it's more of like a morality type of thing. You know, it's like a, can you sleep at night type of thing, knowing that you bought from the one brand who was ripping off the other brand. And you know, for a lot of people like they, they can, they can sleep perfectly fine. I'm not shading you if you are one of those people. I'm just saying like it's, it's a more ethics type of thing for consumers because you're not really taking any financial losses by buying dupes, you're, you're saving money by buying dupes the only time you really start taking financial losses as a consumer is when you start buying like knockoffs that can like harm you harm your skin cause reactions stuff like that um but i don't i don't consider knockoffs dupes you know think back to like the the kylie lip kit days where people were selling like straight up knockoffs of it and like they were putting all type of weird chemicals and stuff like that like that's when you could start taking um financial losses because you know you might end up in the hospital stuff like that but again i don't consider those dupes so for, for consumers it's really like a, a an ethics type of thing but for companies it's a financial thing that you know uh dupes are good for them financially or they're bad for them financially they're good for them financially because since they're for the most part more affordable they're going to sell more of them because everyone sees, oh, this popular product has a cheaper version. I'm gonna go buy what I can afford. Now you're making money off of that way. It's like we said in the consumer part, it might be lazy to say, you know, they don't have to be creative. They don't have to make their own ideas, but it's easy for them. They just see, okay, this is out there. It's popular. A lot of people like it, let's make it. And it's even better for us if we make it better than the original it's easy for them um publicity wise the fact that it's a dupe sells itself like it can sell itself just off the fact that it's a dupe you don't really have to do much else than say hey i am coming out with this this setting spray and depending on what the packaging and stuff like this you probably don't even have to say that this is a dupe for urban decay's all-nighter people can just look at it and tell oh it's a dupe for that and it's more it's more affordable i'm i'm down for it i'm getting it think back to the wet and wild james charles situation if you guys didn't see it wet and wild was coming out with a palette that was similar to the james charles palette and even before james um, addressed it you could look at that palette and tell that it was a dupe for his palette and then James did address it and he was like this looks very similar to the palette that I put out and went and wild was just kind of like and <laughs> what you gonna do who is he gonna be yeah yeah we took your palette what are you gonna do about it like they were like low-key taunting him and you know it's James Charles has a lot of people in the community who do not like him so when they saw it they were just kind of like okay went wild I'm here for it I'm down I'm, I'm gonna support this even though like a, a lot of us know like that that, that was pretty unprofessional but let's not lie with each other you know seeing it you know especially if you, if you like mess seeing it you might have been like okay that's kind of funny you know like I I see you getting your publicity went wild but like you know it like this low-key unprofessional like this low-key like wrong to be doing but it worked it worked for them you know um 
that the the whole controversy and how they how they reacted to it worked for them now a lot of people wanted to see videos comparing the two palettes now you know a lot of people were checking for it because they don't like james and because um you know here was a different option for his palette so it works for brands in a publicity type of way and of course the loss for these brands comes from their ideas being taken by other brands and other brands making money off of their ideas or other brands you know giving other options for their products and making less people buy that brand's product and for smaller brands their ideas being taken by conglomerates that they cannot fight with um as far as sales go they can't fight with these companies legally if they did want to take legal action and it is very hard because you know the whole copyrights and patents of the product not just the product the packaging the names all of that stuff like that's why you see you know a lot of these companies going around selling stuff with like chanel logos on them Ch chanel's not out here like yeah of course you can use my logo like it's just it's it's not easy to to, to deal with that legally or financially. So a lot, of, a lot of companies end up just, it is what it is. That's the market that we're in, it is what it is. I'm not gonna fight it, whatever. And again, like a lot of people said, at the end of the day, a lot of them are still making money, so they don't care. A lot of the times when you do hear about it, it's because it's, it's a smaller brand. Um, but even then, like nothing really comes out of it other than like public shaming because it's just, we're at a point where it's just kind of like, well, what are we going to do about it? So this was a conversation on duping. There's a lot more to it, but I can't fit all of that into uh, however long this video is already. Um, those just, you know, the, the, the good and the bad side, giving you both of them. I'm gonna let you come to your conclusion in the comments down below, whether you agree with it, whether you don't, how you feel about like where the brands stand on this. Like I said, I prefer those, like it just happened to be dupes, you know, like it, or like those, it's not that intentional type of dupes, not, okay, I'm gonna serve you this brand's product on a platter with my own packaging on it. Sometimes not even my own packaging on it type of dupes. That's where I stand on it. I like those, like it just happened to end up working the same type of dupes. But let me know what type of dupes you like in the comments down below or what type of dupes you don't like in the comments down below. Let me know where you stand on all of that. Um, and yeah, make sure to thumbs up, comment, subscribe down below. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.